Welcome to Telling the Tale. I'm your host, Mitchell Farley Wolf, and I'm joined, as per always, with other host, Dustin Jackson. Hey, it's me, everybody. We're back in space. We are back in space with The Expanse, a Telltale series, episode two, Hunting Grounds, released on August 10th, 2023. That was only two days ago at the time of this recording. Very recent. That's crazy. So here's here's the deal. Normally at this point in the show, I would read out uh, who's the director, who's the designer, who's the writer. Uh, it turns out that the credits we got last week at the end of that episode are just the credits. They're, uh, yeah, It just carries over throughout the whole season. Yeah, they are the same. I'm sure there was a certain amount of focus that each writer got on each episode that sort of divvied up the work. But we still only really get the information that uh, the director of the whole game is Stephen Frost. The uh, narrative director and writer, uh, like primary writer, is Jonathan Zimmerman. There are also a number of other writers who I I can't name all of them here, but they uh, certainly deserve their praise. And uh, design lead here was Christopher Sika. And similarly, there were a number of other designers who deserve their praise uh but we cannot get to all of them here during this show so yeah i guess that's just gonna ha- that's just gonna be how it's gonna be uh that's fine not that's fine with me who did what in this season yeah but good job all of you yeah i guess it. i guess it's fine but during the telltale heyday i think we were starting to see connective tissue between different creatives and I guess we yeah. just won't see that here. That's too, that is something I liked about those, like just seeing how much personal influence uh, kind of shines through. I, I remember we brought that up in one of the Strong Bad episodes, the yeah. uh, Strong Baddie of the Free. That's that's the one that sticks out to me. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's not a huge deal, but I did kind of like just seeing the personal touches. Mm-hmm. Speaking of the Strong Bad thing. And we'll get Ooh. back to the expanse in just a moment. Uh, that Rumisode, Dangeresque, the Rumisode Triangulate by Vitelectrix, which, <laughs> as you might know, is the in universe video game company within the Homestar Runner universe, uh, has come out on Steam and itch.io. I believe it was out on some form or another already. Um, but now it's like officially released where you can pay for it and stuff. Right. Um, which feels like the big release. <laughs> the big one. So, yeah, Dustin, I don't know what we're going to do about that, because we've got this other thing we're doing. <laughs> um, we got two other things we're doing. We've got two other things running concurrently. Yeah, we're we're not that flexible right now. Uh, but I would I would love to cover a new Dangeresque game. Sam, How many Dangeresque like, games are we going to get? I Exactly. I, I think we got to do it. Do you just want to do it after we finish, like, these two? These two oh seasons, yeah, I think that would make sense. Yeah, I you know what I think so as well. Yeah, um, my understanding of it is that each of the roomisodes are very small and short as well, and there's only three of them. So we um, could probably just do it all in like one episode, maybe. Yeah, the roomisode on... triangulate would be one episode itself. Yeah, what a that great name good. for a video game, right? <laughs> yeah, just just saying it gives me the giggles. Dangerousque. Even if, like, even just that word, uh, <laughs> we've become a little accustomed to it, so we've forgotten its charm, maybe. But Dangeresque is a great word. I love Dangeresque. Like, some of my favorite emails are the Dangeresque episodes. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> the, the strong bad emails, okay. Yeah. Um... <laughs> some of my favorite emails are, are, like, the receipt I got for buying the Dangeresque <laughs> episode of SBCG4AP. <laughs> yeah, it made me feel good about knowing I can just play this whenever. Yeah, I guess Homestar is going to have maybe the award for best video game names in a video game <laughs> franchise. Strong Bad's Cool Game for Attractive People is an amazing video game name. Dangeresque the Rumisode Triangulate is on some next level Kingdom Hearts stuff. and That's a whole other level. Yeah, that's great. So definitely want to play a new Vitelectrics game. Um... If it's Fit Electrics, I believe that just means it's the Chapmans, right? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they got some other kind of help here, but uh, 
Yeah, that's cool. That's very cool. Yeah, love it. Uh, so I I haven't even touched it yet. I haven't even bought it yet. I'd like to. Uh, I guess I'll just wait until we're done with these. But uh, there's one joke in the trailer that makes me laugh. Just thinking about, just remembering it now. Uh, it's at the end of the trailer when uh, Dangeresque, uh One comes in. Uh, wait, is Homestar Dangerous One or Dangerous Two? He's Dangerous Two, right? I think he's Dangerous Two. Yeah, yeah, because he's brought in mm-hmm. second. Uh, it he so he walks into Dangerous's office and he sees uh he jumped through the window, and uh, he says, "I guess he's gonna had to jump." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, it's a good like, exploration of the English language. Like Homestar is always, uh, yeah, it's it's what they excel at. It is what they excel at. Yeah, it's it's one of the best things they've done. <laughs> the Expanse, a different the Expanse. video game, a video game from yeah. a more civilized era. Yeah, to the other day. Mm-hmm. The just the other day, um, I think. This episode, I'm, I'm going to start with the opinion this time. I'm just going to bring okay. one out. Spit that nasty stuff. I was surprised. Sort of. And I don't know why I was surprised. Because if I thought about it more, I should have just expected this. That, like, oh, we're getting a zero-G shipwreck section in every episode, I guess. Yeah. I guess that makes sense. That is the point of the game. So having it not in an episode... Would be weird. <laughs> it would be strange. It, it would be strange. It would throw me off a little bit. I'm not sure what we would be doing if not that. Because that is clearly the meat and potatoes of what we're doing here. Ooh, um, meat and potatoes. Yeah. You ever use that expression? I just threw it on for size. I don't know if it's I, I don't. I don't, I don't use it, but I know of it. I'm yeah, familiar yeah. with the phrase, meat and potatoes. I've, I've used of it. Um, <laughs> yeah, so... This feels a little bit like something that could and should be thrown into certain sections in a larger game. Like, mm-hmm. I th- I think maybe, and it's weird that it's The Expanse. Like, it's the first big return to the episodic format for te- uh, Telltale. But this game is, even just on its second episode, proving much more strongly than other episodes that we've played, other seasons that we've played. Maybe some of these really should just be larger games with with them all, like, combined into one premium connected product. Yeah, I'm I'm right there with you. Because I gotta say it, I thought this episode was pretty boring. It, it felt yep. like... I've done all of... I did all of this in the first episode. Not a whole lot. There weren't even, like, a whole lot of, like, huge choices, it felt like. It it, it just felt like nothing really happened. And that's that's not necessarily true. It, it felt like less happened than the first episode, which was already pretty short. Yeah, yeah. I I think... I think that's probably true. I think less happened in it. I do think it's longer than the first episode. Um, but... For any amount of added length it has, I don't think it's got that much more substance going on, except for like the very end uh, yeah. of this episode. It has it has a couple fun character moments that are kind of what I'm living for right now as I'm I'm playing through the game. These character moments are uh, oftentimes surprisingly fun, and not surprisingly. I mean, it should just be expected that these games are going to have good characters. Uh, mm-hmm. Characters have always been a strong suit, but I'm I'm liking them even more than I thought I would, especially in comparison to the rest of the game, which is, um, I mean, it's called the Expanse. It's about the void of space, but who, who knew that was gonna feel kind of like devoid of stuff? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I agree. Um... I I still don't know how into these characters I am, but they are growing on me the more time I spend with them. Like, I was like, oh, there's Khan. I remember her from the last episode. I remember Maya. Yeah. I remember these twins. I did not like Khan last episode. And I, I will say as a positive, <laughs> I like Khan a lot more in this episode. Yeah. 
Yeah, Khan has a great glow up in this episode, personality wise. Uh, Maya continues to shine. The twins are actually less interesting than last episode, <laughs> and Virgil <laughs> is maybe two. But uh, oh, is that? Yeah, all I mean, of them? Virgil. I guess that's all. Bar- of them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Virgil's barely even there. Yeah, uh, if there's any additional character in this episode that we didn't get that much of in the first episode, I guess it's Toussaint, uh, the leader of the pirates, who we get a little bit on, like, a patched-in radio signal. Yeah. But we don't even see them. Uh, They're just um, exacting their influence from a distance. And it's... uh... It's interesting, a little bit, like, to have this <laughs> pirate evil force sort of chasing us as we're doing this around the solar system. Um, yeah, Right, we, we, I we, mean, we, it, get, it gets a conflict in there. A con? A conflict? Yeah. Oh! Because con has a special relationship with pirates, as, as we find out, or you can find out. I believe that's I... choice-related. <laughs> I don't think I did find out, so you'll have to fill me in. Oh, interesting. Okay, yeah. Uh, this is this is big. You know what? Um, we were talking last episode about how at the end of the episode we saw like ten choices, and you were uh, you brought up the point, and I think I I mostly agreed with you at the time, uh, but I'm I'm gonna have to take back that agreeing with you. I I think uh, you were saying that yeah, this just feels like a lot of choices, like maybe too many. I don't need to see all these little. Silly choices. Just give me the five that matter. Um, and the amount of branching that I saw was possible at the end of this episode that I wasn't even, like, internalizing was the case, but I, I realized was true after I finished the episode was quite uh-huh. large. Qu- quite uh, surprising how many different little things can uh, go differently. Yeah, I I mean, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel it felt like a lot of those choices at the end really didn't feel like they mattered in the sense of, like, the bigger picture. But just stuff like, uh... You get you know, a lot whether, of more conversation out of someone yeah, versus someone else. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, like, you, it sounds like you got to hear about Khan's past. I did not get that. Yeah, uh, and I'm sure you got more information from Cox, which I certainly did not. Oh, I got z- nothing from Cox. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you, I'm, so you didn't give him the scotch, I guess, He's right? dead. Oh, yeah, that's me. true. He's he's in the vacuum of space. So <laughs> so you didn't give him the scotch? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> no, I did not give yeah, him the so, scotch. I found scotch so, on the the ship. And then Drummer yeah. says, a fine scotch. And I'm like, okay, then pick it up. But then she can't. Uh, and yeah, then she so gets back me- on the ship. And then she sees Cox's old bottle of scotch. Uh, and then she <laughs> says, I'm not about to start drinking a dead man's scotch. Eh, maybe later. Uh, and then that's it. That's all I got that's with funny. the scotch. And it was like a weird amount. Hey, there's a weird amount of scotch references going on. Without any ability to pick any up or drink any or whatever. So, interesting. Whatever. Yeah, so if you still have cocks, if you hung on to your cocks, mm-hmm. uh, okay. you could... Okay, Dustin. <laughs> Sorry. Um, you could grab the scotch and give... You can bring it to Cox, and um, he doesn't give you any information. He ju- You just give it to him, and then Drummer's like, uh, I believe the word you're looking for is uh, thanks. And then Cox says, yeah, yeah, and then that's it. Hmm. Yeah. You'd think that he'd be more gracious considering the alternative. <laughs> you would think. <laughs> yeah, but I guess he doesn't know about my alternative. <laughs> yeah, he's he's unaware that there's a reality out there <laughs> yeah. where, where you decided you don't get to come along. Thank yeah, he's you. probably thinking he's in the worst possible situation. <laughs> How could it get any worse than this? <laughs> Uh, okay, so here's here's the plot of the episode. It's very brief, painterly sketches of the plot of this episode. Uh-huh. Um, at the beginning, we follow up from the cliffhanger at the end of the last episode, which was in that place that we were hanging out at the end of the last episode on the uh, the wreck of the Nakamura, I believe it was. Yeah. Um, 
at the very end, pirates triangulate their position. And it's Toussaint's people. Toussaint is the leader of uh, Europa... Europa's Bane. The, the group of pirates that are known throughout the solar system to just be uh, bad honchos. Re- real, real bad bro- bros. Bad on bros. Yeah, remember when they left all those heads? Yeah, I guess that was them. I guess. that That's what I gathered. I could be wrong, though. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think in universe they don't for sure know, but it does seem yeah. that way. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it could be a red herring, or maybe it, that just straight up is. Yeah, I, I would not be surprised either way with the way that they act. Anyway, uh, yeah. they need to floor it away from... I believe they were on one of the moons of uh, Jupiter, I think, or Saturn. Uh, at, at the end of the last episode, but now they're they're like going into the asteroid belt as fast as possibly as they possibly can. Uh, and there's this interesting thing that they show in the show as well, but I kind of forgot about it. When you uh, go at like these super high speeds in mm-hmm. the uh, in your ships, they have this thing called acceleration juice. <laughs> that they inject into your body and it, it, it like looks like a white liquid coming into uh these tubes into your body to like i don't know what it's doing <laughs> it's just it's just making your body more speed proof for a bit <laughs> acceleration juice yeah i'm not sure on the on the biology of that pharmaceutical application but i love the concept it's very sci-fi i i want to yeah uh, they they all hate it, by the way. Uh, if, Understandable. Yeah, I guess so. But it, I would think it would be more like a drug and they come out of it and they're like, still woozy after that acceleration juice. But it's not that. If it, 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 it almost They almost give the impression that it's like a plastic. It replaces certain humors in your body with uh, speed-proof, acceleration-proof plastics. <laughs> uh, and then they cycle it out when you're done. And... Uh, Especially for Khan, who was, at least for me, I guess, and I don't know if this is possible to avoid. I don't remember if we found out uh, who was shot in the shoulder. Yeah, Khan got shot for me as well. Yeah, and, I think uh, that might be a Lost a whole arm. Yes. Uh, well, not yet, though, right? Uh, like, she's going through the, right. this acceleration thing. The juice and the blood loss from her wound are not cooperating very well. Um, and, uh, once they, they, they find like this debris from an undocumented proxy battle between earth and Mars somewhere on the belt. And they, they go into this debris to hide their ship there because they, they think it'll be undetectable by the pirates, which I think is kind of a cool little beat. I I, I like that in theory. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So the twins and drummer go scavenge around the debris while maya helps the doctor virgil uh amputate it, it, like a full amputation of khan's arm and replace it with a bionic one yeah and you just have to assume the surgery is going well you don't have any insight to that as it's happening which i think is kind of fun you you have this like um you have oh a, no you have insight as it as it's happening yeah you you well you have you sort of have insight you you have to like trust that maya and virgil are doing the best they can do um and you you can call maya every once in a while and be like hey did Khan kill you yet because i she thinks she's coming off the drugs <laughs> <laughs> and maya's like not yet <laughs> we'll see uh yeah you, you, like as you're going around the wreckage you you can just find little things that you remind you of surgery and that can prompt drummer to have the ability to call Maya, which is very right. telltale, very old school <laughs> telltale. Yeah. You can't just call Maya. You need to like in fiction be reminded that that's a thing. <laughs> oh, right. Shit. I should check in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You find uh, a handsaw at one point and then <laughs> I, I guess my drummer doesn't say it out loud, but I guess the thought is, hand saw oh they're sawing off my friend's hand (laughs) (laughs) i guess i better see how that's going yeah 
Which is, I guess, what hand saws are for. Y- yeah. Uh, I thought they were fun little moments. They were fun. You, can- uh, but you get these moments of thinking it went really bad because, like, Khan is shouting over the, the speaker about pirates, like, as if they're there. But then Maya comes in and she's like, no, she's just hallucinating. There's no pirates here. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it. It's fine. Uh, so there's there's some exploration here. There's another couple of things to find around here that, like, y- that you can miss. And uh, did you find everything here? Um, Arlen I wants don't... some meds. I I did find the medicine. I didn't find like all the things you can find because I think there's an achievement for it which I did not get. But I got the magna boots. That's cool, right? Yeah, it is cool. Uh, the medicine. Thank oh, you. Oh man, the medicine was in such a bullshit place. I know. Believe me, I know. Especially because the Earther ship and the Martian ship both have med bays on them. It's not in that. It's just out there. It's just out in the yeah. void, like under a thing. It's not in the places you would think it would be, which I guess is the challenge, but it was not fun to find. Yeah, in my opinion, not a good challenge, because I I think that, like, if you're maneuvering around this nebulous which side is up space, you can't even tell, um, and you're trying to figure out where something like a medicine is... And you go to the med bay. <laughs> I think that's you doing a better like solve of the puzzle than simply meandering around until you find it outside. Yeah, I I agree. That would be a more satisfying puzzle because it would require you to like internalize what you're actually doing rather than just going from point to point. Uh, understand, have the reward be associated with true understanding of the the story and world around you because that's yeah that's what you're like trying to reward here um but what you're actually rewarding is just like going on a wild goose chase yeah just just some like aimless meandering until you happen to find something um i did yeah, did not like i did find some dried mushroom powder you find that I did not find that. I um, didn't find a lot of things, I, I guess. But I did find that medicine. It was some, like, white mushroom uh, powder for cooking with, like umami powder. And um, I don't think I even had a side quest for this, but Virgil ended up wanting it and, and being able to use it. So I got it, and I brought it back for Virgil. That actually was in, if it wasn't the mess hall, I think it was in, like, a... Uh, like a, like a commune room on one of the ships that made more sense to be there um so yeah. that that felt better to me a little bit i think after searching all around for the medicine i just didn't bother looking for anything else i was like i'm i'm done exploring i don't want to go into the mess hall yeah or even if it was like Im- imagine that there was a wall blown off of the side of one of the med bays and uh-huh. on that wall outside the med bay, underneath it was the medicine. That's not where it was. But if that was what it was, that would be like, oh, you have to have this, like, um, mind that that can, like, geometrically say, like, oh, well, this wall would have had a bunch of medicine on it. Let's follow the trajectory of where it would have gone. That, I think, would have been cool also. Uh, and that's just not yeah. what happened. I think that might have been the attempt because it kind of was under a blasted away wall, but it was not next to a med bay. Yeah, it was so it was so far away. I don't even know how I just I just happened to stumble upon it after a lot of exploration. My thing not was fun. I was on the other side of the wall and I looked down and at my feet there was just like an interact for picking up medicine and I didn't see anything. So I just pressed the button to interact with it. And then my character is warped to the other side of the wall where apparently the <laughs> thing was. Um, That's fun. And I just found it that way. Good yeah. job. Good job solving it. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, Do you know who Anderson Dawes is? 
No, I wrote that down too. Yeah, uh, so I should, I should definitely remember who this is because they were they were in the first season of, um, uh, of the show. It, I, I'm looking them up right now, and they seem to have a very large wiki page, but. The uh, the thesis statement here on this wiki page for the Expanse wiki is Anderson Dawes was a belter from Ceres who led the insurgent OPA faction on that station. So he's like a rebel uh, against okay. the uh, the inners, the the Martians and the uh, the Earthers who try to encroach on the belters' territory. Gotcha. I had no idea. He's like a scrappy guy, and it looks like... He's just kind of a scrappy guy. Yeah, and it, it looks like he, um, at one point, previous to the events of this game, uh, recruited and used the service of Kamina Drummer. Uh, so Kamina might have ex... I think I think we, we should know that she does have ex-OPA roots. She used to be part of the OPA, where she was probably a lot more of, like, a political rebel than she presents herself as being in this game. In the game, she's pretty grounded um, and, and not, like, a complete revolutionary. Uh-huh. Yeah, but I guess she was. I And probably still is. It's just not coming up. Who? Maybe it'll come up in a future episode. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, maybe that's what maybe that kind of uh, conflict is what the series is building toward a little bit. Uh-huh. There are little things every now and again where, um, like as you're exploring the wreckage of these ships, you you start to learn more about this proxy war between Earth and Mars that happened to take place on neither Earth nor Mars, and how it was really just um, betraying the trust and safety. Of all the belters that were living in the area. Uh, so that's... Like, like, like it comes out a little bit there. Drummer makes like little remarks off to the side of like... Yeah, another squabble between the two big boys that gets everyone else hurt. Uh, so like you, you get the sense that she's still definitely very focused on, on belter rights issues. But is not... I guess, acting on them too directly. Yeah. She's got other things to deal with right now. Other Like things. avoiding red lasers. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. So that's the second part of this episode. Uh, you you uh, find a bunch of explosives, blast into a wall, and while you're there, um, the, the pirates from Europa's Bane apparently find your position. And um, they they all just come down with these stupid <laughs> I think it's dumb. Is it is it actually dumb? I can't tell. I think it's a little stupid, a little silly, a little a little uh, a little campy here. What the lasers, yep. the security lasers? Yeah. Yeah. I I wrote down in my notes uh wow, these are pretty easy to just avoid and walk around. <laughs> I did get shot up and killed uh once or Ooh, twice. Oh, I did not. Oh, you made it through the whole thing. Um, yeah, I personally thought it would have been very hard to get shot by these, but I guess not. Um, well, y- usually, yes. There's a couple that, like, <laughs> really just come out from around the corner that you can't have seen. Right. Um, that really, I guess what that was meaning when I got killed by that was just go slower, and I probably would have been fine. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, you know what? It's learning. You died, but you learned. I do think that this is probably a bottleneck challenge for people who were not used to the zero g controls um this is this is them like really testing the waters with hey uh are you sure (laughs) about playing this video (laughs) game because you're gonna have to do some zero g stuff um it's all been very slow at your own pace explore if you want to uh like golden path it if you want to up to this point but now there's a lot of, like, you have to be pretty particular about how you float around these lasers. Um, yeah, I think I did back. a good job. Yeah, I think I bet you did. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's getting hot in this room. 
It's getting a little Ooh. toasty. Getting a little sweltery. Getting a little smoggy Ooh. over here. I mean, I I do agree it's silly. It's a, it's a little uh, goofy, especially since they're put in, like, the just the right spots that you can just maneuver around them. Mm-hmm. But it's still kind of neat to get something like this in a Telltale game. Like, yeah. I was like, oh, that's not something... Like, it... It's just a pretty easy challenge, but it's still something different. It's not something I've done for this podcast. Yeah, I think that's true. I think it's like the first real-time action thing outside of like QTE events. Yeah. Um, which stands for Quick Time Events. events. <laughs> um, yeah, we got some of those again here too. That part where... Uh, so, so that part where there's like two of the pirates there, and you just kind of gotta shoot them in a yeah. QTE. That felt very. Uh, it it felt like it was supposed to be like a big action scene, but it's done in like a few seconds. And it's yeah, there's only that. two of them. I guess the biggest a- action scene comes later. Uh, Maya floats down to you. Drummer tells her not to, but she does anyway, uh, and brings you like a mountable missile launcher, I guess. One of the ones that you just kind of have. Everyone's got a couple of these in their garage. And (laughs) uh, they use these heat-seeking launchable missiles to launch at the missiles that the pirate ship is launching at them. Uh, and then they, they <laughs> eventually they do it. Every single one of the missiles they launch, they m- launch a counter missile and hit it in mid, not air, but mid void. Uh, and then they got one of the thrusters off of the pirate's ship, and that was enough to slow them down so that when they got back on their own ship, they could go fast enough to uh, t- to get out of their radar's range. Good for them. Yeah. Good for them. I'm happy that they succeeded. And that was, I thought, the end of this episode. Because after uh, like after the missile section, there's a fade to black. And it's the fade to black kind of one that could easily have transitioned into credits. And uh, I would have thought, like, oh, that's a weird place to end the, uh, end the episode. But then it just faded back up. Like it was, like yeah. it, it thought about ending, but it, then it's like, no, I got a, a couple more minutes. We got a, we got some other stuff we can do. Yeah. Uh, so then Maya and Drummer are lying in the airlock, and this is this is I guess an emotional scene. Um, where, uh, <laughs> I guess this is an emotional scene. Is that a rude way to phrase that? <laughs> <laughs> I've been told this is what emotions are. I, I don't know. <laughs> I guess this is supposedly what they were going for. Okay, that was a rude way to to phrase that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, No, I I get I get what you you mean though. I I I, it's weird that I said it that way because I did think it was an emotional scene. Um, Yeah, we'll just say it is an emotional scene. It is an emotional (laughs) scene where they're they're in the airlock. Uh they, they can't even let the air into this airlock yet, so they can't relax at all. Uh, Maya and Drummer are just like lying on the ground. Maya puts her hand on Drummer's hand, uh, which I think is the first. Th- I mean, they've been flirting for like an episode and a half at this point, but this is the first, I think, really direct, undeniable flirtation that you see. Yeah. Yeah, this. Uh, I think so. I think this is the first, like, overt, like, oh, uh, there could be a little something. Yeah. And, uh,. Eventually, you hear on the intercom in the airlock that uh, Khan has directed the ship far enough away from the pirates to be out of range so they can let the air in and they breathe a sigh of relief. They clink helmets together uh, in a way that seems to have meant uh, they were trying to kiss and and forgot or something. (laughs) (laughs) They forgot. (laughs) Uh, And then Virgil comes and uh, calls for... Uh, celebrations are in order, and then it fades to black again. And I thought, <laughs> okay, well, this is it. And Surely then, and then no, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, they just do that sometimes. 
Uh, and then, yeah. then you're basically done with, with all of the meat of the episode. Uh, you go around, you can talk to everyone, and everyone's got these cool things they can say. And, uh, uh, Dustin, you, you do anything cool in this section? Um, I mean, I gave Arlen the medicine. Cool, yeah, yeah. I mean, here it just seems like you're able to talk to the whole crew, uh, get them what they need. I th- Is this where you can give Virgil the mushroom powder stuff? Right, yeah. I didn't, I didn't get it. So, um, based on the language of the choices that they tell me at the end of this episode, um, I can, and also based on you having said that you don't get this, I can have talked to Khan about her past. And I did. Uh, the way that I did this was, I think it was from the last episode, There was, on the Nakamura, there was a, uh, a cigar in like a mm-hmm. cigar case that I just found. Uh, yeah, I had no idea. You didn't find the cigar? Okay. Uh so I gave No, it was it was like yeah, like in the choices it said uh gave Khan the cigar and heard about her past. And I was like, "What cigar?" Yeah, it was a whole episode ago. Yeah, I wow. I had no I hadn't the foggiest. Yeah, I give Khan the cigar. Khan reveals that uh she flips me off with her bionic middle finger. I did get that. And then uh the the lighter comes out at the end and she lights the cigar with it. Oh, see, for me, she just flipped me off. <laughs> yeah, for me, she flipped me off, but there was a purpose because that's where her lighter is. For you, I guess it was just a funny thing. It was, yeah, it was just a just silly... For fun. Yeah, it was just fuck me, I guess. So, Khan, um Yeah, she talks about her ex-husband, Bo. She has a a picture of Bo and her from when they were younger. Mm -hmm. And uh, they apparently had this this system all worked out where if pirates boarded the ship before they would come into contact with Khan, Khan would already be there with her hands behind her head, but there would be uh, two Magnum guns in her hands. And... When Bo said the word, the the code word, Bo would take out her guns and just shoot all the pirates dead. They practiced it a few times. Mm -hmm. And Khan was very confident about the speed at which she could draw and fire. But there was one uh, incident, the first time they actually had to do it with real pirates, where uh, Bo said the code word and Khan like froze and and didn't know what to do just in that moment. In the heat of the moment, and the pirates killed Bo, uh, and that's part of the reason she uh, dislikes pirates so much. And, Man, uh, I get. I yeah. guess that is the one time you don't want to fuck it up. Yeah, the only time it matters at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the code Whoops. word, just to just to put some icing on the cake, the code word was Artemis, the Greek god of archery, goddess of archery. Um, and the reason that it was Artemis, which is also the name of your ship, um, is because Artemis never misses her shot, which is the thing that Khan did. <laughs> uh, <laughs> miss her shot. Man, what are what are the odds? It couldn't have been shittier. Yeah, they were they were pretty messed up. I I bet. And <laughs> uh, yeah, so Khan feels very tortured about this for understandable reasons. I liked hearing this. Drummer had a lot of, like, little insight that she could add during the telling of this story where Khan said, like, it's a pretty good system, right? And I had drummers say, I don't know, it's, like, really risky. You're just, you're betting everything on the one move that you could just shoot them all uh, right away. And Khan said, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) Yep. Justifying it as when it's pirates, you only ever actually get the one shot. So it doesn't matter if you're banking it all on one shot. One shot's all you get. Um, but yeah. I think that's a weird justification. I just don't think it's a good plan. But uh, <laughs> I don't need to tell Khan that. It's her tragic backstory. Um, yeah, but it all it all really comes down to Maya at the end of this episode. Yeah. You go down to her, um, cause she, is she the engineer? She's the engineer? Uh, I think so. 
Yeah, I, th- I think I think that's true. Uh, you go down to Maya's like. She's working on something down in the... It looks like the garage of the ship. <laughs> um, and she's just listening to some music. And you can lis- You can stand there and listen to music in like this... Uh, <laughs> like like there, there's these camera angles that keep shifting around the room. And I probably watched three cycles of this before I realized, oh, this is not going to end. You gotta back out manually. Yeah, you do. Did you stay there for a while, too? I did. I don't think as long as you did. (laughs) But then I remembered, oh, yeah, it said press B to back out. Yeah, it did say that. But I was wondering if, you know, because this is a choice-based system, like, is there going to be some difference between me staying the whole time or, like, leaving halfway through and Maya saying, I guess she didn't like it that much. (laughs) Um... (laughs) Yeah, it's funny because it, the the music is presented as Maya saying like, "Oh, it's this Martian shit. You wouldn't like it." And it's the most like like American Southern folk rock thing. <laughs> yeah, and then one of the choices to say is, "Uh, yeah, it's definitely Martian music." <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the culture of Mars is in the Expanse because I never saw any of Mars in the show. Um, do you think Mars just is? very american southy maybe i i'm <laughs> i i guess that would be a route you could go with it yeah, yeah that's interesting Amer- <laughs> it, it is very interesting uh, i i guess it makes sense because currently the uh the the majority of american i guess the world space exploration has a lot of roots in texas right yeah so there's there's that, I guess. So maybe Mars is just fairly Texan. I don't know. It doesn't matter to me. Anyway, <laughs> uh, after that point, uh, th- there's a lot of very aggressive flirting. How yeah. did you deal with this as your version of drummer? Uh, I guess I just flirted back. I, I was receptive. Okay, okay. Uh, and, th- and then we got to have S-E-X in the other room. Okay, okay. So, uh, at at the very end of the episode, the last choice you you make, really, uh, Maya says, well, look, we're having this fight right now. I guess we should settle it. Uh, We can come to my bedroom and settle it. And then you you walk back to the, the bedrooms, and you have the choice between Maya's room on your left or your room on your right. And while you're making that choice, Drummer says, I do want to sleep with Maya. (laughs) <laughs> i do want to sleep with maya but i'm the captain now and if we sleep together everyone on the ship will definitely know about it so what do we do about that <laughs> I, it could be best to avoid all the drama is it is one night worth of fun worth all the drama uh and i chose yeah it is it, it would be fine yeah as as did i yeah I guess there is, like, a subordinate power issue there that you could think about more. But, like, their relationship and flirtation definitely pre-existed drummers. Yeah, before she was made captain. Yeah. 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 Uh, And and then uh, it does a time skip. Does a time skip. And... and, uh, Well, not not much longer. It's the same night. Yeah, just... Yeah, just like a a little bit after the sex. Right. Yes, thank you. And then uh, you get called up by Khan to see something on the monitor. Mm-hmm. And it's like a... I, I couldn't tell what it was. <laughs> I couldn't either. It was not very clear. But whatever it was, I guess it was big. Yeah, it it, it looked like a, like a man-made satellite burrowed into the side of an asteroid. And I guess there was no... There was supposed to be no inhabitation there in this asteroid, but there was. Yeah. Um, I, I've seen this image in the show, and I still kind of didn't understand the significance when I saw it in the show. Um... So there's there's that. Neat though. Yeah, and and then it finally ends. Yeah, that's the ending, I guess. That time is real. Yeah. I, I I think there's a conflict here of like wanting to end on a really strong narrative thematic note 
And then also the marketing angle of having to end on a cliffhanger that makes you excited about the next episode, which is coming out in, in, in like an amount of time from now. And if it was all yeah. one game, you could just have the end of the chapter be falling asleep with Maya, because that's what the chapter would be. Um, right. Or, yeah. or not falling asleep with Maya, as checking my notes, 13% of people did. <laughs> pretty small, <laughs> pretty small group. I I guess that would be a weird way to end the episode, though, saying, okay, you know what? I'm not going to sleep with Maya. That is the end. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, smiling, snuggling up with your own pillows. I'm making a good decision. <laughs> I made a good choice not doing that. I'm the professional. <laughs> Yeah, and and then the player's just like, okay, I get, I guess we can end it there. Yeah, feels so good not being <laughs> horny. I'm the professional around here. Man, I can't w- wait to wake up and continue not having sex. Yeah, it's 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 a weird it's a weird thing to frame it as like the rest of the crew will know about it. Is it worth all the drama? Because frankly, that hasn't been the biggest thing to worry about in this game so far yeah who cares if arlen steps to me i'll punch him in the face i did it an episode ago (laughs) if cox steps to me i'll kill him with outer space (laughs) i have a feeling you're not gonna need to do that a second time but you never know yeah and i don't see virgil or Khan caring so like i it doesn't it's not even a big deal it's not even a deal at all yeah, who, there's zero incentive to not, especially since Maya's waiting for you, you don't want to be like, mm, I'll just go to my room, fuck it. <laughs> yeah, well, Maya <laughs> Maya leaves it open as, like, my door is unlocked. I She doesn't right. say she's definite, well, actually, you know, the way it's talked about, if I was in that situation in real life, and I was in Maya's shoes after that conversation, I wouldn't think... There was much of a chance that she wouldn't come. <laughs> yeah, I'd be a little upset if she didn't. <laughs> yeah, if she didn't, I well, I, I it would be up to her, and it would be uh, understandable if she presented it like, "Well, look, I'm the captain now, and I've got other things I need to worry about." But still, right, based on that conversation, it did seem like we, at the very least, had made plans for an appointment. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and it and it just it never happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. Uh, yeah, thirteen percent of you nerds out there, how are you feeling about that? You feel like you <laughs> you made a real good I am decision. A, <laughs> I am a professional. I am a professional. I'm a steadfast person. They don't come to me to play games. They just get me the job that needs doing. That's yeah, you, would... nerds. <laughs> it would be one thing if maybe uh. For a hypothetical example, if maybe Selena Kyle was already dating Harvey Dent, uh, sure. then maybe the situation would be a little different. But, uh, boy, all the signals were there. Yeah, I mean, you're also both single, and you're both interested, and you've exactly. got a lot of free time. <laughs> it, it, like, there's, it doesn't seem to be much of a conflict. They did not build up this to be a conflict at all. Yeah, like, what's the downside? Maybe there's an off chance someone on the ship might say, oh, hmm. Hmm. Interesting. (laughs) Yeah, Rayan would be like, I thought we were dating, drummer. Like, no, that's not the thing. (laughs) That's not the story. (laughs) Remember when I was nice to you earlier? (laughs) Uh, Oh, by the way, Rayan, uh, actually, I'll save it because I I might want to talk about it later. Uh, okay <laughs> but but that's that's basically the episode we're at the place oh we didn't bring up the fact that at the end of the first episode we got those coordinates right now yeah we are at that place we found it and that's what we were looking at on the screen yeah good for us so that's um i i suppose gonna be the place that we check out with zero g in episode three which yeah i i guess i'm i'm the most excited for because that's the one place we've checked out so far that actually seems to have like interesting things we're looking for. I was about to say, I'm hoping it's not more hallways and debris. You think we're going to find more heads? I hope so. They should just have hidden heads in every episode. <laughs> like, like if you want, uh, you know, those panels that you have to like cut out in a square with your laser gun thing. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe 
every episode <laughs> just has a secret one of those panels that you need to get really close on for the interact to show up. And then if you like cut it out, just a head comes out of the wall. <laughs> and drummer's like, ah. No. Gross. <laughs> Weird. Oh, speaking of, uh, uh-huh. this episode has one of, uh, w- one of the most interesting telltale deaths in a telltale game. There's a lone oh, pirate yeah. uh, just looking at the drone that has the lasers that c- that come out of it, and he's just standing there at the like at the ledge of just some space debris, kind of like scratching his chin, going, "Hmm, I don't know what to do about this uh, <laughs> drone." And <laughs> drummer can run up and do a flying kick into this guy's back, have him fall over the side a little bit, bend his like upper torso into the drone's uh, light sensors, which fire a gun from a million miles away. So many bullets that just completely eat up his entire upper torso. Um, Like, it looks like it had been clawed open and and emptied by by some sort of animal just to get rid of all the upper torso and leave the legs just standing there normally. Yeah, it was wild. I was like, "Wow, those legs are just still standing." Yeah, and it, it. I think this was an important moment, thematically, actually, to tell the audience, like, "Oh, drummer can kill people," because yeah, drummer she doesn't have any hangups about uh, killing these uh, bad, dirty pirates. Yeah, because like with Cox, um, it, even if you do space Cox. Cox is going to feel like a uh, a conflicted choice no matter what. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I feel good about having spaced him, as I brought up on the show before. But I still feel like, oh, you know, could have gone another way. Uh, but this is an example, because it forces you, the, the player, to do this. There's no way out of this. You have to do it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just to say, like, okay, no, 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 no. Drummer cannon will kill people for sh- for sure. She's very yeah, like, cool don't even it. worry about it. Not even worried about it. Everyone on the Artemis is also like, yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's what you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I guess it makes sense if if there's ever been like a situation in one of these Telltale games where I would believe someone just just straight up killing someone. I guess it would be this. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So that's this episode. I think. I think. I yeah. We covered all of it. Okay. You know what? I think we did a good job talking about it, considering not that much happens in it. Yeah, I think so too. When Let's get... pat ourselves on the back. I will do that during our segments. Okay. Okay. Uh, what's your golden moment? I liked listening to the Martian music with Maya. I did too. I, I wrote that I, down. I, I thought it was a nice... We joked about it, but I did think it was a nice song. I thought it was just a nice little moment. Oh, I liked it a lot. It, just, it, it is a little silly that yeah. <laughs> uh, they call this music Martian music. <laughs> <laughs> Martian music sounds strangely like music I've already heard. Yeah, because it's not like EDM trying to be weird and extraterrestrial and like... Ab, like ab uh ab natural or anything it's just it's it's just some some music it's just some like woman singing with a guitar backing kind of thing yeah it was nice it is a very good song i'll say that uh in, yeah. in a genre of songs i don't normally go for i i think i would listen to this song on its own yeah i agree that that's why i i uh i just sat there and listened to it for a little bit before i was like well i should probably because at that point, I didn't know how much left of the episode there was. Mm-hmm. Um, I, You know what? I'm going to look up what band plays that song. Uh, okay. The Expanse. Episode 2. Song. <laughs> um. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if it was just called something like Martian Music? <laughs> uh, <laughs> that would be great. Uh, my Dear Love. Um... Okay, I'm I'm on a Reddit thread that is asking about it. Um uh, 
Do do ba ba do ba do do ba 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 ba. I'm okay. It's apparently an original song written by some of the game's writers, or at least the oh. words were. Interesting. That's cool. Um. Yeah. My dear love. I believe it's called. Um. Yeah. My dear love. Cool. I like that. That's even more impressive that it's just straight up an original song for this. Yeah, because uh, Telltale has a history of us really being impressed. I guess we have a history of being very impressed with Telltale's music choices from the fact that their one continuous composer through the whole time was Jared Emerson Johnson. Uh, they worked with other composers as well, but like often it was them working with Jared Emerson Johnson to fill out the soundtrack. Or, yeah. um, like, it was just, like, uh, using Michael Land or, or, or something when it's Monkey Island. And mm -hmm. uh, there, there's a history there. Uh, he's just one of the best musicians of all time. Oh, definitely. Um, and, and also in games that use more licensed music and more um, licensed sounding music, I guess, like this one. Uh, they just make really good choices. Even New Tales from the Borderlands had some excellent music. Uh, that is, yeah, that's the one definitely. part of that game we cannot fault at all. Uh, <laughs> they had two different Nowhere songs in there. That's crazy. That's crazy. I always come back to that. In the first, um, the the first Tales from the Borderlands had that busy earning song that uh, we talked about on the podcast, and that that song's rad as hell. I love that uh, Silver Lining song. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I listen to that one, like, all the time to this day. And that's interesting because, like, old Telltale and new Telltale and, uh, like, Gearbox, they're all different groups, sort of, like Deck Nine. Uh, but they all kind of carry that lineage of, like, okay, we know how to do this with music, though. We know, we know this choice. Yeah. It did strike me just now in this conversation, I guess we didn't talk about this at all, the biggest lack that this game probably has, Jared Emerson Johnson. I was just thinking about that. I was just wondering, like, is Jared Emerson Johnson here? I didn't even look it up. Yeah, oh, I'm looking that up so right now. I guess now. not. Uh, the Expanse? Jer Jared <laughs> Emerson Johnson, mark? The Expanse? Um, hum, 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 hum. Oh, no, yeah, huh, <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm looking at Jared Emerson Johnson's Wikipedia page, which of course is Wikipedia, and we don't know. He is confirmed for The Wolf Among Us too. That's good. Yeah, I guess not The Expanse, though, based on what I'm looking at here. Uh, I, uh, I typed in Jared Emerson Johnson, The Expanse. Um... And nothing came up. Nothing came up. Yeah. 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 I mean, I guess to be fair, I don't remember paying much attention to the music. Other than this song, which I thought was great. Yeah, I, I think this uh, the music does a good enough job at being very atmospheric to the point where I don't notice it so much. Yeah. Um, not bad. I mean, like, it, it's what this game needs it's the mm -hmm. specific vibe this game is going for, so that's good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the in a game literally called The Expanse, there is a lot of purposeful use of nothing, which um, is done well, but is also at the end of the day nothing. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so it, it is what it is. But Mitchell, who's your weekly guy this week? Weekly guy is Khan. My weekly guy's okay. con. Although, I could be persuaded to say Rayan. I, I did say Rayan. I, okay. I thought, uh, I thought you know, he's just kind of a nice... There's not a whole lot to him yet, but I just liked having someone nice to me on this fucking ship. I, I guess Maya is too, of course, but... Uh, oh, yeah. Now, Rayan, Rayan just strikes me as like, you know, it's him and Arlen... And Rayan just seems like the more genuine of the two, like just gen genuinely nice to you and appreciative for everything you do. Uh, maybe that could be totally different if you did cut his little leg off. Might be true. Might be true. Uh, maybe he <laughs> just hates you. 
Yeah, I, <laughs> if you catch, so, okay, during the parts of the exploration where you're searching for the reactive mass, that mm-hmm. you can explode one of the doors that you need to explode, e- explore with, um, right. you send, like, these canisters out to Ray and he collects them, and so you don't need to, like, actually bring them back anywhere. And whenever you do that, he's so excited to catch it. And he's so excited <laughs> to get it. Uh, you send one of the canisters out, and Rayan goes, Ooh! Base is loaded! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, touchdown! Touchdown! <laughs> <laughs> That's such a good thing to say. Base is loaded? As just like a general <laughs> celebratory thing to say. <laughs> like something to say when something went extremely right and good? Yeah, because it's not even about... The home run part. <laughs> yeah, no one scored anything. No one's, it's, it's just a potential for excellence is there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? I'm yeah, I'm sticking with Rayan. Mm-hmm. He's he's good. Uh, I I guess I still do say Khan though. Khan is Khan was really great this episode. Well, you you got that backstory for Khan, which mm-hmm. I think probably goes a long way too. Yeah, the conversation I had with Khan seemed pretty great. I could tell from the choices that I did not get all of the conversation I could get with Virgil, though. Yeah. I don't know if you got it. I gave him mushrooms. I thought that would have been enough. Mushrooms. <laughs> I thought that's what he wanted. Yeah. He did seem very excited to have them and was cooking with them and he loved it. Yeah. So want to know how my conversation with uh, Virgil went in this episode? Sure. So I went up to Virgil and I and uh drummer says uh hey so earlier Cox said you uh you were maybe hiding something is there something you want to say and Virgil says uh nope and that's it That happened with me too. That also <laughs> happened just after the mushroom thing. He's just like uh no. It mm-hmm. did feel like it kind of soured the moment cuz he was so excited to have this mushroom powder and then I said wait are you hiding something and he's like no. <laughs> don't worry about don't it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> that sounds like something someone would say if they were hiding something. <laughs> oh. Uh yeah, so I guess I'm I'm waiting for Virgil to really shine. I think he's got potential. Yeah, obviously they're building up to something with him. Yeah, I want that grand slam, but right now it's just bases loaded. <laughs> I I need that touchdown. I need that touchdown for Virgil the doctor. <laughs> Um, and choice we, cut, it's got to, it's got to be sleeping with Maya, right? Yeah. It, it's not a choice I even thought about. I, it was like one, probably the easiest choice, but it's still fun. There's not too many other choices in the whole episode. <laughs> yeah. Like there's choices as in you can do something to get more dialogue, but that's it really. Yeah, and I think that's just another reason this maybe should have been one premium game. Because, yeah. like, if you have a big section in the the 20 to 40% of the game mark, where there's not that many choices, if it's one big game, that's fine. You can put, like, all your different stuff that the game has at different parts of the game, and that's totally okay. But now, if you're saying... The last time I got to play this game was two weeks ago. The next time I'll be able to play this game is two weeks from now. I can't go forward with this even if we didn't have a podcast that had a very regimented schedule. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I like I, I can't I can't know what's next. And that just means that I need to do a little bit of everything in this episode. And the parts that this episode wants me to do, which is like this is a big fumble around and explore episode um that comes across and the parts of this game that the episode has to have that also comes across and it just feels like oh we we needed one choice right before the end so you could uh, choose to do the obviously interesting thing or not Mm. (laughs) so uh yeah it's just a it's just an interesting little choice cut there (laughs) <laughs> just an interesting little choice cut. Just an interesting little choice cut. Not that little one. That there's the expanse. Yeah, uh, the expanse episode two in particular. Yeah, it's the expanse episode. That's the expanse. A telltale. Uh, fuck, 
Fuck. (laughs) (laughs) Take two. That's The Expanse, a Telltale series, colon, episode two, colon, Hunting Grounds. By Telltale and Deck Nine. Published (laughs) by Alcon. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, all those involved. (laughs) Uh, for making video games. Uh, We'll talk to you again about The Expanse in two weeks, but in one week from now, on our very next episode of the podcast, we'll be getting back to episode three of the third season of The Walking Dead, A New Frontier. So we'll see you you then. You know what I'll say about that? Hmm. When Before we started doing this alternating uh, episodes uh, dealy, I thought it was going to feel like it's it was going pretty slow. It actually had... I mean, we've already done two episodes of both. That's four episodes. Yeah. And if we do one more, we'll be halfway through this alternating season era. Yeah. It feels like it's just flying by. Yeah. And you know what else it is? It's, it's making it feel a little bit less weird that we're only getting one The Expanse episode every two weeks. Which yeah. uh, is actually way faster than most Telltale games in the past yeah. were, but is still about double the amount of time I think a normal person just playing through and catching it as it comes out would need. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. No, I agree with that. <laughs> yeah, I, I think if you add this, the Expanse episode to the previous, um, it's not even four hours. Yeah. So even if you're quite busy in a two week period, you could you could do that. Just don't sleep. <laughs> One time. Yeah, devote all your attention to this now. Yeah. Um I am excited to see where we go with these characters a, yeah. a little. I, I just I wish I was more hooked to this point. I agree. Yeah. Um but I, I'm not. I'm not totally not into it. I also wish that we were doing any of the more like larger scale parts of the expanse. Go to Ceres in the asteroid belt where there's where there's people, or Mars, or Earth, where there's like conversations that can be had. Yeah. Um. Because. Like, yeah, because this episode really does just feel like more of what we already got in the first episode. You're exploring the ship and the debris, and you're on your ship talking to the crew. Yeah, because this really isn't what the story of The Expanse normally is. Like, there's a lot of uh, exploring zero-G wreckage and stuff. That happens. That's part of it, for sure. Yeah. Um, But there's also a lot of characters. Like, there's a lot of life. There's a lot of uh, civilization and and townships and stuff throughout the asteroid belt. Uh, And we're, we're simply not getting that at all. Yeah, hope, hopefully before the end of it. Yeah. Um, I, I I don't know. I mean, I, I kind of don't see it happening at, at this rate because... It can't, it can't be just more of this, though. I think it can. I mean, like, if every episode's going to have a zeros G part, that means we're not going to a town, right? Like, that means that the majority of each episode is, is going to take place in, uh, like, a big exploration zone. Right. Yeah, well, we'll we'll see. I I'd like to think that there will be more than just this, but uh, who knows? Yeah, and so far the number of characters I've had on my ship has only gone down. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah, you're you're minus one person. You know, frankly, Virgil might have a secret, so I might space him next. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually doing better than you are when it comes to people on your ship. <laughs> okay, well, that's been telling the tale. We've really liked talking to y'all this time. I think this time more than most times. If I can, if I can say that, I don't want to speak for Dustin. He might hate you, but I no, liked you know it more what? than most times this time. No, you know what? They caught us on a good day today. They did. They um, did. Yeah, you know what? Just feeling good. You know, I smelled a flower earlier. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, you know, looking good, looking up. Have a great summer. Have a great, you know what, better summer than normal.